It's Wednesday. You know what that means. Time for the Southern California Writers Association Hump Day Tour. I'm your host, Maddie Margarita, here with Diana Pardee on tech. And every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., the Southern California Writers Association welcomes a new author to talk about their books and their work. This morning, we are so happy to welcome Lee Matthew Goldberg. Good morning, Lee. Good morning. Hey. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to tell everybody a little bit about you. Um, Lee is the author of eight novels, including The Ancestor and The Mentor, currently in development as a film off his original script, currently in development, I'm sorry, as a film off his original script, and the YA series Runaway Train. He has been published in multiple languages and nominated for the Prix de Polar. No, that's not right. Well, how is that pronounced? I think that is, I, I really don't speak French. Okay. All right. So we're going to say- nailed it. I think that was it. Yeah. We're, we're going to say that's it. Um, <laughs> Stalker Stalked is um, his latest thriller. It's releasing this week. Yes. Um, after graduating with an F MFA from uh, the new school, his writing has numerous publications. As uh, He has won uh, numerous uh, screenplay contests, and he is a co-curator of the Gorilla Lit Reading Series and lives in New York City. Okay, we got through that. Uh, so tell us about the uh, Stalker Stalked and how exciting it is to release another book in the pandemic. Yeah, so this is actually the fifth book I've released during a pandemic. Oh. Um, I've just kind of pumped them out. And why not? Everybody's home. They might as well be reading it. Um, so Stalker Stalked, I think it's the most um, on the nose title that I've had for a book. It's literally about a stalker who gets stalked. Um, she's obsessed with reality TV and she focuses on her favorite reality TV star, this woman named Magnolia, who's on the show Socialites. Um, and while she's stalking her, she starts to feel like maybe she's being stalked as well. She has to go through everybody in her life to wonder if one of them is maybe the stalker or if potentially Magnolia is trying to turn the tables and stalk her as well. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a fun, fun thriller, but also um, kind of picks at um, social media, celebrity culture and reality TV um, and where we're at with that today. Well, you know, I, I, um, it's interesting that you chose um, the pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. as uh, Lexi's uh, career, yes. given, given her uh, proclivities. Um, so do you want to talk about what it's like to write a character like her? Sure. So the other thing I should add is that um, she she works as a pharma rep and she's very good at sampling her own products. Um, so she basically lives in this sort of feud state where she doesn't know what's happening, if it's reality or not. Um, so she's the perfect um, uh, kind of untrustworthy narrator, unreliable narrator. And I think it works for a book like this because you never know if what's happening is actually reality or if it's not. And literally, that's what she's going through as well. Um, so it's also kind of a direct hit on the pharma industry and, and, and things like that. I have a lot of targets and I, I, kind of, I, I kind of hit them all in this book. Well, I, I think that's one thing that I've noticed about your writing is you kind of have mm -hmm. to pay attention. Uh, if you, and, and it's the kind of, they're the kind of books that if you read the second time, you pick up a lot more than you picked up the first time, which is great. So much. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I mean, I write thrillers mostly, but I like to say I write literary thrillers, thrillers that make you think. Um, so I, I love it if, if, if a reader gives it a second, you know, pass and notices things that maybe they didn't notice the first time. That, that's really the best thing I think an author can hope for um, with their books. But, and I, I also think that it's uh, ironic on the stalking. So let's talk a little bit about the stalking um, sure. and, and that part of the plot and what attracted you to that and, and how that it, it whipsaws back to... Um, to, I guess, there's justice somewhere in there. Right, right. I mean, yes, the, the characters that need a comeuppance definitely get their comeuppance throughout the novel. Um, you know, we're all stalkers these days. We, we, we exist on social media in a in, in different way than we exist in real life. And the ability to be able to contact people, to follow every facet of their life is greater now than it's ever been. And it's only gonna get worse, let's be honest. It's not gonna get better in terms of that. And while social media has like great things that come out of it and you know this virtual world that we live in, um, I think could really believe that they're literally in touch with these people that they follow every day, that they're a part of their life. And that's unfortunately what happens to Lexi. She's so invested in this other woman's life 
that she really believes they're like best friends um, where they've never met IRL. Um, and I think that's something that unfortunately um, could happen to, to, to people that really kind of start to follow people too much. Yeah, similarly to how I stalked you to uh, invite you on that was a, today. That's yes. good stalking. That's yes. something that <laughs> you know, social media working in a positive way. Yeah, place. okay, there we go. So there, there, there is yeah, and even on my there. website, I say, feel free to stalk me on social media. I mean, these days as a writer, the best way to get your books out there really is, you know, power of that word of mouth and, and, and social media, honestly. So yeah, go for it. Stop. So, um, okay, everybody, that, that was the open invitation, but okay. we'll see what happens next. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you said this is the fifth book. So mm -hmm. let's talk about your, some of your other books and um, yeah. the fact that you write both as, as the novelist and a screenwriter, which is writing yeah. full and writing spare. So yes, really yes. interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm very prolific, and I like writing in different genres as well. So while I'm mostly a thriller writer, I also have a YA series that just came out this year. Um, it's called Runaway Train, and the first two books are out. And it's about this teen girl um, in the '90s. Um, unfortunately, her sister dies, and she kind of goes off the rails. And she dreams of being a grunge singer like her idol Kurt Cobain. So she runs away from home to, to meet him and, and make her dreams come true and, you know, goes through an up and down journey. Um, so, yeah, the first two books are out and I'm working right now on the third. I'm, I'm finishing it up. Um, and then, yeah, The Ancestor also came out um, in this in this pandemic year that's felt like five. So I feel like actually yeah, I've had like five years of books coming out where it's not the case. Um, and yeah, I, I, I love movies and I love screenwriting. And I also would like to um, make enough money to continue being a writer. And what people don't realize is novelists were really not paid that much. Um, so my, my goal is really to adapt all of my works and, into film and TV and to start developing them that way. And some things are slowly happening with a few of them. So, so we'll see. Actually, something very recent with Stalker Stock, somebody reached out. So we'll see if that, um, you know, uh, becomes bigger than it is. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. Um, yeah. And I, I noticed, noticed too that uh, you write in various sub-genres. So, mm -hmm. I mean, most of the books still have that thriller feel, but yeah. they also delve into to different genres. You want to talk a little bit about it? Sure, yeah. I mean, for me, it's like I never want to be bored when I'm writing. So I write whatever I feel like. And I mean, thrillers are fun. They keep you turning the pages. So I think if I always keep that mantra with every book I write, even the YA series that's technically not a thriller, there's thriller aspects to it. I also have a science fiction book called Orange City that came out in the spring. Um, and it's really a thriller with science fiction elements. Right. Even The Ancestor had some sci-fi supernatural right. kind of connected to it. Um, and I'm, I'm slowly conceiving a sequel to The Ancestor because uh, the book kind of end, it doesn't quite end. Um, uh, so I, I feel like there's more room for where it could continue. And yeah, I just like to write whatever I, I'm interested in because if I'm interested first, then hopefully the readers are interested second. So what, what can people expect when they read your books? When they read a book written by yeah. uh, Lee Matthew Goldberg? As I opposed to Lee Goldberg, who lives here, but Lee Matthew. Yes, yes, yes. We've met, we've met plenty of times, and I'm actually Lee Matthew Goldberg because of him. Um, it's my real name, but <laughs> no. when I was when I was starting out, I, I couldn't be Lee Goldberg with you know the yeah. great Goldberg. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, he he's the reason I'm Lee Matthew Goldberg. So what people could expect from a Lee Matthew Goldberg book, I think it's a book they've never read before. Um, they're all my books are very unique. Yeah, they're thrillers, but I think they tell stories that you haven't quite heard before. You can maybe be like, it's a mashup of this meets that. Like my book, The Mentor, was a mashup of Cape Fear meets Michael Chabon's Wonder Boys. But it had all these other kind of twists and turns that I think make it unique to itself. And I like to write very visually. So I like to think that all my books almost read like movies in a way. Um, and, and, and again, because I want to you know, get into that business more, um, that's always my goal. So yeah, if, if you like kind of dark, a little bit twisted, a little bit out there, um, you know, maybe not safe for work. Um, yeah, pick up a Lee Matthew Goldberg book. Oh, no, we, we, um, we like all that. So um, when, when you're looking to write a, a new book or a mm -hmm. new piece of work, yeah. what kinds of themes 
or plots attract you? And do the, do certain themes tend to run through your books? I, there's a lot of themes that I've noticed. I write a lot about like obsession for whatever reason. I think also it perpetuates a thriller to have like an obsessed character. But um, looking at a lot of my books, the link of, of obsession kind of runs through. I would like to write about like power dynamics a lot, power dynamics between like, you know, like a mentor and a mentee, um, you know, the characters and the ancestor, the stalker and the stalk. So I like these sort of dualities that, that, I, that I play with a lot. Um, what was the second part of your question? I'm sorry. No, th no, that was it. Um, oh. You know, what kinds of themes tend to um, run through your books and what kinds of plots attract you? So I think you-, you I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm always inspired by so many things, music, art, film, TV. I have a book that's been on my mind that I'm probably going to start next. Um, I'm, I'm leaning into, um, I've never really written Jewish characters and I'm Jewish. And, and so I, I really want to lean in towards that. So I have a book that I just finished about um, a family of Jewish bank robbers in the 1980s that lose all their money in the stock market and the only thing that isn't repossessed is the family's rv so they hop in the rv and the kids rob everybody robs and they become the most notorious bank robbers of the 1980s until everything starts to kind of fall apart um so yeah I like so it's a fun family thriller it's a fun family thriller. <laughs> yeah. where it has like a coen brothers kind of like a jewish wes anderson meets coen brothers um, and then I have another bit that, that's been on my mind for a while that's going to be very serious. Um, and it's about a Jewish man in um, the 1950s who starts to work for an advertising agency and starts noticing a lot of kind of digs and slurs and he's the only, he's the only Jew in the agency when Madison Avenue is blowing up. And then he starts to notice potentially in the advertising some like Nazi paraphernalia and things like that. So he has to kind of decide to take down this advertising industry for fear that the hatred would kind of spread. But that one's, that one's going to take me a long time to write. There's a lot of research um, and I want to make sure I, I, I get that right and really write about like the Jewish experience and tradition and religion. And so how, how many hours a day do you write? I usually write from one to five every day. Um, I write in park when the weather is nice so it's like the perfect time when the sun is there when it's not winter um and then i'll edit in the morning and then maybe sometimes pick at it at night but yeah usually about four hours is, is my sweet spot more than your brain to like leak out of your ear a little bit so i guess we can see what uh we can expect with your writing right there so yeah. um is so uh the book is available right now on um amazon right yeah so the book Docked, it's available for pre-order for the next two days and then on the 17th um, in paperback, audio and Kindle and all, you know, ebooks, um, you can get it. And Amazon, and Barnes and Noble, yeah, wherever, wherever books are sold. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you so much. This is great. We wish you a lot of luck in all your books, particularly this one. Um, and, yeah, thanks so much for having me. This was a blast to do. And, you know, I look forward to connecting with uh, a lot of new readers. Okay, well, um, Lee has uh, graciously agreed to hang around and mm -hmm. visit the Southern California Writers Association Facebook page. Um, yeah. If you have questions mm -hmm. and comments after we're done, mm -hmm. um, if you can support him, if you can afford to buy his books, please do. Um, if you can't, um, there's this really amazing place called the library that you can borrow them for free. But if you do, please leave a review because reviews, yeah, yeah. reviews review, writers live for reviews. Yeah. So if you can't do that and, and you love his work, please review it. Um, yeah. And uh, again, we had another uh, wonderful, I guess this is our 52nd Hump Day book awesome. tour. Uh, so thank you again for being here. I hope uh, if you are watching this on YouTube that you like, subscribe uh, and comment because that's what all the kids say. So that's what we hope you do. And we hope you'll join us next time. So until then, take care.